We just watched The Burbs, starring Tom Hanks, and Bruce Dern, mm -hmm. and Carrie Fisher. So, Mark, what'd you think? <laughs> this was a funny movie. Yeah. <laughs> this took the concept as far as it could go with it, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. 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 Like, I haven't seen too many movies in this style, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't any th seen anything that does it quite like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's, uh, how do you, how do I describe this? It's, uh... Again, it feels like one of those films that I would see, like, browsing television, and mm -hmm. then, oh, this is just the movie that happens to be on. Yeah. And this is, like, the golden gem you find. <laughs> well, this is, a well, this is golden age Tom Hanks. Yeah. And they really... I don't know if they give him material. They do give him material, but he definitely has a This ball. is the Tom Hanks-ish yeah. role. Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks has ever been. I think so, too. Yeah. I'm shocked. Yeah, this movie feels written for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do we describe this? Because I feel like not everyone has heard of this. It's kind of like Stand By Me, but Whoa. it's set in a neighborhood, and everyone's grown up. <laughs> Stand by me. That's a weird one. Maybe <laughs> not. Not really. It's but... like suburban neighborhood suspects that their newly moved neighbor, just moved in neighbor, well, a month moved in neighbor, is up to no good. It's kind of like Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but like this right. is like twenty, like twenty years later, mm -hmm. and Pee Wee's moved out. It's like in the same universe. And like, yeah, it's in the same universe as Pee Wee's Big, Big Adventure. Adventure. Yep. Yeah. 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 With a lot of zaniness. Yeah. Bruce Stern is kind of insane in this. I don't know if he does all his stunts. I'm sure he probably has a stunt double, but he like, he's very, very um, agile and limber in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, just great, great cast all on Corey Feldman's in this. Really interesting cast. Yeah, if we're talking Sam yeah. by Me, Corey Feldman's a little older. He's a little whacked out. He's not quite modern day musician Corey Feldman yet. But look that up if you don't want to, don't know what I'm referring He's to. Crazy about that. <laughs> I'm pretty crazy about that. Yeah. So Mark, I have to give to you. I have to give you. A, ask you a question. Yeah. How many stars would you give this film? I'm in between four and four and a half. Really? Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, you're probably getting this five, aren't you? How do you know? Because this is exactly your kind of movie. Hey, oh man, you know me. I know you too well. <laughs> oh man, I was worried that I was going to review five and you were going to be like, man. You really need to. You, you really I already knew high. you were gonna give you this five. Knew. I knew like thirty minutes. Out. Was, this is this really? is your five star. It film did for take. You. I, I I would say it did take thirty minutes. The beginning. Mm. I wasn't sure what it was. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of exposition, but it I was, but yeah. then I understood exactly why yeah. it was there. Mm -hmm. You know, so the last movie I felt this way was Mary Poppins, but this is the movie I wish I grew up with. <laughs> this is one of those. Like, I, I watched Back to the Future many years ago for the first time, but I was a college kid. And that movie, maybe, you know, it is more perfect, the script is more perfect, and it's more iconic, but that movie never gave me the feeling that this gave me. That, like, oh, man, I missed out in my childhood. Mm -hmm. Like, with Back to the Future, I don't know, it, yeah, it didn't hit that spot. This one did. And it's the burbs. And I like it more than big. You do? Yeah. Oh man! I mean, they gave Big four and a half. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I love and I love Big, but like Tom Hanks has a ball. He like knocks it out of the park. All of the actors in this have ball. Yeah. They. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever the other dude is, oh, the the dude who plays, they call him the fat guy, the fat neighbor. But I I, I don't know the his Walter? name. The Walter. No, Art. Art. The fat neighbor. Just the just the chubbier one, the the one that's a little bigger. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. art. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend this. I will recommend some other films without going into too much detail, and you'll be surprised by some of them. Okay, sure. Okay. I'll recommend Rear Window. What the hell? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. See, I see that. See? Okay. See? That makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. In a weird way. Yeah. In That's... a weird way. It's basically the same plot, exactly. but like Hitchcock. <laughs> yes. Instead of, yeah, shot, yeah. Yeah, instead of zany, almost 90s film. Well, Rear Window kind of pokes fun at the... the Slightly pokes fun at the absurd nature of it, but they Hitchcock actually delivers on the thriller aspect. Mm -hmm. This one this one does it a totally different way. Yeah. And um, 
I recommend Arsenic and Old Lace, the screwball comedy. I cannot say why. Saying any more will be spoilery. Okay, because we're going to watch that soon. For both movies. Like. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, we're going to watch that too. Um, what else? I would, you know... Oh, I could recommend something like Fright Night, but they don't really work. They don't really... Fright Night, yeah. Like, yeah. I remember you showing Fright Night. This makes me think of Fright Night, and it's not Fright Night. This is not Fright Night. This is not Fright Night. Yeah, Mark didn't like Fright Night. I love Fright Night, but... Yeah. Yeah, you showed a whole bunch of campy horror films then, right? Do any of them come close to this? I love American Werewolf in London very much, but I don't think it's this. Mm. It's not this good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we, we did say horror. I It's... I mean, I mean, that's kind of what a lot this of people is, call but... it a horror comedy, but this one definitely ups the comedy more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not that much horror in this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not even scary. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was PG. I say it's PG thirteen. There are some moments where they push it a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There, yeah. Highly recommend it. Mark probably recommends it too. Yeah. Hey, you get four and four and a half, man. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, it's just, I don't know, this isn't really my cup of tea. Okay. Like, I would only watch this film, like, I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to watch a film like this. Okay. Like, I would only, under very specific circumstances, want to watch something like this. Like, if I send him a very long Facebook message explaining how I'm feeling some light horror, <laughs> and I recommend the three films That's what that happens I to me. Yeah. yeah. I recommended, um, I recommended Tremors. I recommended The Burbs, and I recommended Creep Show, and I haven't seen all, any of those. I'm glad we went. I'm glad we gone with The Burbs. Yeah, same. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a good film. It's gonna be on my all time somewhere. Oh, I can see it's, that. Yeah, I can see that. It's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just hits it. It just good. hits the spot. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say? That's spoiler free. I, this is a great date movie. Yeah. I would love to watch this as a right. date. You're right. Like, not like the... If, if you're the kind of person who likes, like, a really heady date, that's probably more what I would, like, want in a date. Mm -hmm. But if you're the kind of person who just wants something fun... Yeah, go watch Enter the Void if you're on a heady date. No. Well, <laughs> But, like, we if you just want a yet. fun movie for a date, uh -huh. or, like... Would you call this a, fam a good family film? I'd say so. Yeah. It's, if, you, if your kids, you know... There is some... I'd watch it with my, with my mother in a heartbeat. Right, exactly. Yeah. There is some humor that's slightly aimed for adults. So I'd say you're... You probably shouldn't show your six-year-old, but if you have an eight- or nine-year-old who's, like, who can take, you know, certain, you know... A little bit of spookiness, then... Yeah. A little bit of spookiness. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I feel like there was some, there was some adult content. I don't know. There were some jokes that were definitely... Well, there's, a, the there's a jokes for the grown-ups, but it's not adult humor. Okay. It's not, like... About sex right, or anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's great. I would watch it again. Imagine if a drive-in theater showed this. Mm. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, go watch The Burbs. Okay. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. I thought you said this was about worms. No, that's Tremors. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting here this whole time. Where are the worms coming? Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I told you. One of them was a worm movie. One of them was I thought Tom we were Hanks watching movie. the worm. I thought Tom Hanks was going to fight off worms. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, man. You mean this could have been a higher rating if you didn't know that? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I figured, like, Quite there was some soon. miscommunication yeah. Yeah. or something. Yeah. No, this is not yeah. the worm movie. I will say, though, I wish the movie ended about ten minutes earlier than it did. Yeah. Like, I would have been much more satisfied if they had taken the anti-ending. Right. Which they almost did. Right. But then they gratified the whole... Uh -huh. So that they can have the happy ending moment. I actually had to question, like, why is this working? When when they did the, the, the other twist, mm -hmm. where, like, oh, no, he's actually evil. Yeah. He's actually, like, a freaky, freaky family. Mm -hmm. It worked. It was okay. It made it work, but it made it work in the context of this kind of movie, mm -hmm. and I was impressed that it made it, it made it seem like they were not taking that route. Mm. But then they did. Oh, but I think the the ending was so brief that was just to get more action and get more Tom Hanks and get Tom Hanks in an, Tom Hanks in like a bundle. Yeah. 
And I don't think it detracts from the fact that they were so successful at making it, you know, just a normal, hmm. normal thing. I guess so. Oh, I, we sh we should talk about Jerry Goldsmith's soundtrack. Yeah, in the it's so good. Oh, we didn't, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. Do right, that. right. It totally has that yeah. feeling of like. There's something way bigger happening, but because it's in like one street in one neighborhood, that's kind of what makes the com what makes the comedy and the music work mm -hmm. very often. Yeah, it's sort of like um, what's his name? It's it's part of why Pee Wee is so reminiscent of this. Danny Elfman. Yeah, it sounds like a Danny Elfman score, yeah. but it's not Danny Elfman. It's you know Jerry Goldsmith. Instead. Jerry Goldsmith sort of like emulating Dan Danny Elfman. It's got a bit more of that traditional yeah. Hollywood flair when it tries yeah. to imitate like the military stuff. You can tell. Yeah. You can tell he's done it before. Yeah. And then there's a thing I scene I think is imitating good, the bad, and the ugly. It definitely is. Okay. It definitely is. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I think once it went on and on and on, yeah. yeah. And then it comes back with the music. Yeah, it's totally yeah. good, bad, yeah. and the ugly. Yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It ages well. I think the direction is pretty good too. There are moments oh, yeah, where they. Yeah, they just the director knows how to bring the humor up, and it's not in like an Edgar Wright kind of way, where like the mm. the, the humor is purely visual. It's just that the visuals support the moments. It's very character based. Yes, it's not. It, it's character based instead of visual based, but it's also like going for visual humor at the same time. Yeah. You know, I never thought, like, like Gremlins is one of those movies that everyone recommends, and this is by Joe Dante, who did Gremlins. Oh, okay. And I've never seen Gremlins, but after seeing this, I kind of want to watch Gremlins. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this this sounds like, it, yeah, this feels right. Huh. And, you know, you get the you get the Dutch angle, the canted frame, and some parts that are just horror -y, it just racks up the yeah. tension. Yeah. Well, whatever tension this film has, which isn't too much. It also plays on jump scares very well. I mean, I'm sure, like, with our audio system, some of... Wait, I, really? I mean, there's a lot of, like, oh, sudden, like, people just walking in, like, the fake-out scares. And I think in a oh. movie theater environment, some of those might have given me, like, the slight, just, like, a, a little jolt, just like, oh... Oh, I wasn't expecting it. It wasn't like, it would be like, oh, but it'd be like, oh. Yeah, it's like a pretend jump scare. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like this jump scare you would give a two-year-old. Yeah, well, that's usually my biggest yeah. pet peeve because there will be serious horror films where a where, where cat would jump out the door. But I, I I think it's interesting how I find I think all of them work here. Like there's one with Corey Feldman charges in and then like the plate breaks. Remember when they first? Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's the moment I was thinking. Of. Yeah, that's one of them. But like the reason it works, I think it's twofold. The first one is obviously the the humorous tone and the humorous tone. You know, it's clear it's poking fun at those horror tropes mm -hmm. and the fact that all of them are the people doing it mm -hmm. and none of them are actually. The, the the creepy villain neighbors mm -hmm. that are doing it that just made it better and second of all they never utilized loud music it was always whatever sound was being made by the object and so mm -hmm. i don't feel like it's cheap yeah there are movies made like you know in the 2010s where when a cat jumps out it's <laughs> yeah. with your giant bass and your giant like sharps shing. yeah you know that just just doesn't work i'm egregious of that in my own film scores oh really yeah and i and i i'm, I'm shameful of it i'm doing a way i'm that, doing bad i'm doing jump scares like that oh well, there's a way that it works it almost works if you build the tension correctly it can work mm. and every the two times and where i've done it i've tried to build the tension in a way that or right or at absolutely. least the filmmaker builds the tension in a way that makes it work it's not really all my doing but mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, with like a James Wan type horror film, like Insidious. And I, m I imagine The Conjuring is the same way. Like, those films definitely rely on the soundtrack. And everyone calls, especially The Conjuring, they call them good jump scares. And I haven't seen The Conjuring, but I know James Wan's style of directing. And everyone seems to give him a pass. But I've seen Insidious, and I can't stand those jump scares. I'm just like, okay, they make me feel very uncomfortable. They make me sweat. They make me, like, they actually get me. But there is no reward there. Mm -hmm. It just feels very, very empty. Yeah, here the reward is a gag. That it's it's a gag. It's a gag, and it makes you laugh at the characters or with the characters or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um. Corey Feldman. <laughs> Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Um, every character in this movie has quirks that are just really weird. Yeah. Yeah. And there are certain things that you know you can say like, oh, the family seems. Like, they're just making fun of German people. But it is also the horror trope that makes it work. Yeah. They, 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 they make... 
they make it really clear they're exaggerating. Yeah, it's sort of like they also make a couple of jokes that like they kind of get away with because they're being ironic. Mm -hmm. Um, like. Um, I'm gonna go do something useful with my life. I'm gonna go watch television. Right, right, right. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> or like, um, <laughs> the freaking line. Um, yeah, I know which line you're thinking um, of. With, uh, with Carrie Fisher. Yeah, said, it's um, like. It, oh, it's like it's like. Oh, I'm keeping him here yeah, until yeah. he was the husband that I re yeah, that I married. <laughs> he resembles the husband I married. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. You know, there's definitely some poking fun at suburbia here. I mean, the mm -hmm. movie's called The Burbs. But I think the way it's done here, it's just, it's very light. Mm -hmm. It's not something like, well, I don't know if we should even go as far as shortcuts or American Beauty. No. But like, <laughs> it's nice to see it done like in such a light way. But then the lines are funny, but they're also kind of hard hitting. You think about it, you're like, wow, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, well, not really until like Tom Hanks is like, we're the freaks big monologue that things really got hard hitting for me oh yeah well i mean of course yeah yeah that's another thing where like it's for, for some other films like yesterday's film uh freaking what's it called world on a wire like certain things they 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 try to give some things really clear and mm -hmm. it annoys me but i feel like tom hanks you know shouting out the message or not the message or like Getting, giving that monologue, it added something to the film. Well, this film, it, I mean, it's already sort of, like, cartoonish. Mm -hmm. And that it it wouldn't be in the style of the film to not do that. Yeah. Right? Like, in... Right. In what yesterday's film, it it would have seemed out of place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it still annoys me that, like, they have this message, and then they kind of go back on that message. They and don't then, really go back. Well, on it's the it's like it's it's con it like okay, so the whole thing is more of like a ironic, like, like um, farce. Right. 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 And then that and it doesn't. Then it turns out the farce is real, and they realize, oh wait, what have we done? Mm -hmm. And then they justify the farce. Well, you know, the characters have to end with a happy ending. Yeah, I feel like it's the like only a reason it it's exists. a justification for a happy ending. It's like yeah. But it takes away from the message, but at the same time, like, indulges in it. It's, I think it works for it me. It works, no, it, but, it, eh, I don't know. The reason it works for me is because I like how the revelation was done in a way that only enhances the comedy. They didn't do That's the true. revelation That's in true. the house with things go bumping. I mean, things do go bump, but then you discover it's a giant dog. Also, the giant dog thing, you can t clearly tell they're just doing camera tricks. You never see the dog next to a person, ever. <laughs> It's well, all camera yeah. tricks. It's great. Well, yeah. Oh, I should have recommended The Sandlot because that one has a giant dog. <laughs> yeah, I feel like giant dogs in movies that, like, are threatening. Watch The Sandlot. Is there a... That's the entire last the act. Night. Spoiler. That's, a, that's but... a really bad... That's a bad joke. What? Um, there's no Clifford the Big Red Dog live action. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, there should not be. No. That's terrifying. That would be awful. Yeah. Um, you know, I almost... When, when Tom Hanks was, like, bundled up at the end, I almost made a Saving Private Ryan joke. Oh, my God. Because, like, he was... Yeah, like, Bruce Stern was even going, Yeah, soldier! Soldier! And I'm like... I, I was even... You remember I, I said, I mean... And it didn't continue. Oh! That was like, I mean, I haven't seen Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> which, by the way, I'm really sorry. But... <laughs> in, yeah. For this for this movie, the, I mean, it's very appropriate. I, wish I, I wish I made that joke so that I could have gotten you. Um, but, but Tom Hanks was talking too much. Which is a good thing in this. It's funny, like, I wonder, like, there's probably some doctoral student who's done a dissertation on Doc Tom Hanks and, like, mm -hmm. done a study on the Tom Hanks character. Because, mm. I mean, like, his the characters he plays, they're not always the same, but they're usually kind of the same person. Yep. Yep. And especially in a movie that's as cartoonish as this, this is, mm -hmm. like, Tom Hanks characterizing himself, mm -hmm. the character that he usually plays. Yep. Um, there is even one moment where Woody's name got name dropped. It was like Woody and Diane, like Woody sm Woody's stupid and Diane smells. I think that's an older that. reference. Is that what is that referencing? I don't know. It sounds like some TV show, some some sort of yeah. character. Okay, my my brain jumped to Tom Hanks characters. That's that's, uh, that's know, uh, but, at um, least five years later. Yeah. Yeah. At least oh, that's five years later. That is later. Okay, so that's not yeah. possible. Okay, or six years I'm, later. Okay, I'm not thinking yeah. straight then. But um, okay, the, the the not real 
thing. Anyway, this film has a lot of references. There's a scene where they he he flips the channel and they're all horrors. Yeah, channels. you get Texas Chainsaw. That... I think you get the Sentinel, <laughs> which is a film that uh, Corey Feldman name dropped, and um, the and then you get the Exorcist. All, the Exorcist. And Chainsaw. Yeah. Um, and then the dream sequence. Oh, yeah, the dream sequence. Oh, that's so fantastic. good. And I think yeah. the best part is, I was expecting the Tom, Tom Hanks to do the regular, oh, I'll wake up at the night. And then the cut is Mr. Rogers. This is Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah. That was a great cut. And it's so good. Yeah. There were several cuts in this that had us just in laughing. Stitches. Yeah. yeah, in stitches. Yeah, I can't remember all of them. Yeah. But Bruce Stern falling off a roof was so funny to me. I don't know why. <laughs> Because he first drops his guns, and he literally just falls. It's it's so good. So, again, I don't know if he has a... It's probably a stunt double. He looks, he looks pretty old. Or he could have... Well, he was old, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah that's... Maybe he just has that's, an old face. That's good clown training right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we yeah, go. Good clown training. There you go. I had one point, but I don't remember. Great. This always happens. Do you have anything else to say while I ponder? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um... Okay, well, guess we're cutting it. Yeah, it's that's it. I, I mean, I guess that's what it. else you gonna yeah. say? Yeah, that's that's it's the burbs. That's the burbs. Yeah, yeah. From the title alone, this sounds like a movie about birds. Mm -hmm. I thought this was gonna be about birds. We should have paired the burbs and the birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh my god! Because <laughs> I've never seen that one. Nor do I have any interest. Well, I guess I have some interest. It's like a disaster movie. I wonder if there's a post. I almost want to call this genre not co comedy, horror comedy, but almost like post-modern, not post-horror. It can be post-horror. Post I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like that term better. Yeah. Because post-horror is, it It acknowledges horror. The characters in the film are very aware of the horror tropes, mm -hmm. and they play into the horror tropes. Mm -hmm. uh, Fright Night did this, too. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, very much so. I well, mean, they had, like, oh, well, they were, yeah. like... Like when they they when the neighbors were doing spooky stuff, they was started getting themselves scared by watching horror films. Oh right, they right, They do the right. exact same thing. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. Yeah, Friday Night is is fun. I really like it, but I don't think it does it nearly as well. Yeah, as no, this. not at all. Friday Night really, eventually, Friday Night totally caves in on its own. Yeah, but it's not quite post horror. It's just a horror film that that is just clever enough to slightly stand out from other eighties horror films. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I remember my point. So you were talking about Tom Hanks' characters. Um, I was looking at Letterboxd in his filmography. I'm like, wow, this man really changed, didn't he? I found the one film that, that basically marked the beginning of Academy Award Tom Hanks. Oh, really? It was Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. He it came out a... in the early 90s. Okay. It was like, like one or two years after this. I've seen Philadelphia. Me too. He, oh, yeah. He's still kind of Tom Hanks in that character, but he's like a very subdued Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A very different kind of Tom Hanks. Yeah. Like the, like the pathos kind. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. And they did Forrest Gump, which you can argue is still a Tom Hanks. Role. Yes, it's, it's Tom Hanks with flavor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I haven't seen it. Ah. Uh, hey. It's like the one movie born in that, that, you know, like I went on a phase where I watched films that were released the year I was born. Hmm. Just like the Pulp Fiction, the Shawshanks, because that's considered to be one of the most iconic years, because all the iconic films came out. I still haven't seen Clerks. <laughs> I will watch Clerks, because I hear it's really good. Yeah. But Forrest Gump was the Academy Award winner that year. And I know recently there's a wave of wave of people saying, oh no, that didn't deserve it. And there are people who give like half star and one star and one and a half star on Letterbox. So, you know. It's a good film. Maybe it's a good film. <laughs> all right. All right. Maybe. I'll watch it. And maybe I'll still be doing videos to talk about it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Oh, this came out the same year as Turner and Hooch. <laughs> Turner and Hooch is awful. <laughs> Compared to this. Man, I need to ask if our good friend Daniel has seen The Burbs. Because the Daniel composer who uh, who thought who, who grew up with Turner and Hooch and said this is one of his all-time favorites. Oh my goodness. I'm going to ask him if he's seen The Burbs. Yeah, he if he likes that kind of humor, he would love this. Yes, I mean, Turner just doesn't even compare. Yeah, it's just such a generic film compared to this. It's generic. It's like a comedy crime story, like alongside Ace Ventura, except with less problematic issues, I guess. Problematic issues. Wow, that's redundant. Anyway, 
I think I'm done talking. Me too. Yeah. So, um... Okay. Yeah. Bye. Hope you like our new camera angle. Yeah, uh... Hopefully in the shot. Remember, suburbia... I, I have no idea. Suburbia is dangerous, but, um... We're out, they're out to get you. They're out if to you, get if you. You're, if you're doing spooky stuff. Yeah, and make sure you take your vacations on the lake when you have to. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye.